Ja. Hey guys, welcome. You don't have to be over 30 to see the appeal of a good hiking chair, but I find that it does help. I've been a longtime fan of Halinox's chairs, and when we reviewed their Chair Zero last year, I said that it was probably the lightest chair with back support on the market. And that's probably still true, but I may have glossed over the fact that there's actually a category of chairs like this one right here that weigh about half as much and still provide a fair bit of back support. The only caveat is that it requires you to have an inflatable mat. This is the Sea to Summit Air Chair, and as you can see, it's actually nothing more than a kind of harness that lets you fold and constrain your inflatable mat into something that looks like one of these inflatable sofas. So is it really as comfortable as a Chesterfield? Well, that's probably asking a bit much, but as you can imagine, the big selling point of these is that it's very plush, it's very cushioned, and you can kind of choose how soft or firm you want it by inflating and deflating the mat. The potential downside is that there is nothing behind your back to prop you up. The, the back support that you get, and it's a fair bit, but it comes from the combination of these support legs, adjustable straps on the side, and your own weight pushing down on the seat. As you can see, there is no horizontal bar across the back. It's just the mat folded into and strapped in place by the air chair. All of that gives you a fair amount of back support, but how shall I put it? It's not full back support in the sense that it vaguely feels like it might topple over if you don't engage your core a little. And the support is the strongest near the top of the chair, so there is less lower back support than with some other types of hiking chairs. Unless you find yourself a very smooth surface at the right height to put your air chair on top of, you should be aware that you're gonna be very close to the ground, sitting among the poor chairless plebs instead of lording over them like a bona fide chair owner should. So that is a little unfortunate, but there's an upside. Unless your sleeping mat has a very low R value, you are not gonna be bothered by the cold ground since you'll be sitting on top of not one, but two layers of sleeping mat. Durability. The air chair is very light at 250 grams, 8.6 ounces, and there isn't that much to it really, but the bottom is made from a 70D fabric, so fairly heavy duty. If you're worried about durability, my guess would be that your mat is gonna be more at risk than the air chair itself, which is unfortunate because your mat is both more important and more expensive. The air chair does cover the mat in the places where it's most likely to be damaged, so that's a good thing. It also strikes me as a clear advantage over the main competitor, the Thermrest Trekker chair, which is an otherwise very similar design, but you are still putting a lot of pressure on your mat in ways that it probably wasn't specifically designed to handle. So I reached out to the company that imports Sea to Summit here in Belgium and asked them if through the years they've had any warranty issues with sleeping pads being torn, being punctured when used with the air chair. And the answer was they've had very few, if any, of these cases, and that a normal sleeping pad made from a 30 to 40 denier fabric should have no problems dealing with this kind of pressure. If you don't overinflate it, they also added that you shouldn't be jumping on the chair or using it right on top of sharp rocks or thorns, but I think that goes uh, without saying. So that's reassuring unless you have a very light sleeping pad. My lightest mat at the moment is the Thermarest Neo Air Uber Light, which is a great pad, but it's only 15 denier. And indeed, I would not be completely comfortable using that with the air chair because it's just too delicate of a fabric. One last thing about durability. If your evenings are usually spent around the fire, you might have to deal with the same anxiety that I have with this thing because I'm always worrying that a flying ember could land on the sleeping pad and might damage it. And you know, right after an exhausting day, just before you want to go to bed, doesn't sound like much of a party. I do bring a patch kit, but I'd rather not have to use it, and a burn hole might be, I don't know, harder to fix maybe than a puncture, so I'm not taking any chances. And I'll usually cover the mat with a towel when I'm near the fire. There are two sizes to the air chair, regular and large, and they are somewhat confusing to me uh, because on the website, Sea to Summit says the regular air chair fits small and regular pads, and the large one, unsurprisingly, fits large pads. 
But I have the large version and the mat I think this works best with is my Etherlite XT Extreme and that is a regular size. It's true that the Etherlite series are a bit thicker than your average mat, so maybe that's an explanation. But if you have one of those and they are pretty popular, then my gut feeling is that they may be a bit bulky for the regular size air chair. If anyone has first hand experience with that combo, please uh, let us all know in the comments. One of the great delights of the air chair is watching someone else set it up for the first time. Here are my buddies Steve and Frank doing their best with no explanation except for the little icons printed on the side of the air chair. Now I have wel zoiets van elke duvel is één duvel te veel. Als je het nog nooit gedaan hebt. Ik weet zelfs niet hoe ik dat moet aflaten. Ik denk dat we verschillende shots moeten doen. Ik ga dat anders doen. Gewoon. Oké, drie opnieuw. Die dingen mag ik losklikken, hè? Ik ga gewoon gaan met mijn intuïtie. En dan lach je met mijn ruit achteraf. Ah, ah zo. Ja, ja. Puur alleen al voor dit geprul zou ik het al niet kopen. Oké, okay, terug opnieuw. Ik heb het gevoel dat dit nog wel goed komt. Ik durf het testen. Het zit eigenlijk wel goed. Honestly, it's not really that difficult to set up, but unless you watch a video first, it can kind of throw you for a loop. Like Steve, I spent way too much time on this the first time, but I haven't really had any issues with it since. If comfort were the only consideration, I would probably choose a Helinox chair over the air chair in most situations. Maybe it's just because I'm used to it, maybe it's the added height or the different kind of back support it provides. It's just a better fit for me. It's a very minor difference, however, and the air chair has three important advantages. It's half the weight, it is less than half the price, and, and this is a big one, it is the perfect chair to use inside your tent. Any chair with legs is gonna have two problems inside a tent. One is that it's gonna leave you with a very limited amount of headroom, and two, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on the floor of your tent and risk damaging your ground sheet. Even with the air chair, I still tend to put something under the little support rods to just to be on the safe side, but it's definitely a much better solution for times when things like rain or bugs force you inside. The main disadvantages compared to other hiking chairs, aside from the fear of puncturing, is I think the ease of setting up. The air chair just takes longer to set up, even if you don't factor in the time it takes to inflate the mat. Also, most people store their pads near the bottom or the back of their backpack, so taking it out isn't always gonna be an easy option. All that means that while there are chairs that you can quickly deploy to sit on during a short break, this isn't really one of them. This is strictly a cam chair. So combined with the built-in insulation, and the fact that it works uh, very well inside the tent, I think this is a great fit for winter hikes, where your breaks are shorter and your evenings are naturally longer. In conclusion, I like the air chair, and I definitely think it's worth looking into if you already own a sleeping pad that can support it, if you are looking for a camp chair, and if you regularly spend evenings inside your tent rather than around the fire. Especially in those cases, at half the price, half the weight, it really is a steal. Just make sure that you bring your patch kit. Thanks for watching and see you next time.